what's up guys welcome back to yet a new video on my youtube channel in today's video let's see lightroom photoshop and capture one you're going to push process this image in all of these three softwares and make a full retouch of this image which i shot some months ago unfortunately i didn't provide it behind the scenes and let's just get into the video but before we get into that don't forget to subscribe then on the bell notification icon also share this video at the end so that others can also find this video and come and learn on how to post process fully retouch in either photoshop lightroom and capture one so first off i'm going to start with lightroom same old same old lightroom i shot this with my canon 5d mark 4 with an 85 millimeter lens iso 100 f 3.2 Shutter so speed 1 over 160 with a layered lighting technique. So if you haven't watched my layered lighting technique or if you're wondering what layered lighting is, I'm going to leave a card up here. You can go watch that and see what I mean by layered lighting technique. Right. So let's just get into editing this. I shot this using, I think, camera neutral, but I want to quickly um, color correct this right from the go. Right. So I'm going to hold control or command on the keyboard, command for Mac then i'm going to draw a quick box over here so the reason why i'm drawing a box is because i'm trying to find out the gray area 50 percent gray just so that i can color correct this with my white balance too so after further search on her skin i ended up using the black markings over here on the scarf here so i'm just going to pick this right i want to zoom in the more just so i'm accurate then i'll pick this then just take a look at the pick targets in your job, the checkbox that comes up. Where your box is pointing is where the pixel is going to be picked from. So I'm going to say this is a 50% neutral gray ground. I just tap on it, then I'll zoom out. And this is what I am looking at. I just will change the color profile from Adobe Color to Camera Standard. I miss using Camera Standard. Then um, basically, let's see. Let's see the before. And the after so i feel like there's too much contrast so i'm just going to reduce the contrast a little bit open up my shadows also open up my blacks because if you take a look at the information over here or uh, let me just turn on my clipping mask and see if my blacks are crashing i don't think my blacks are crashing i'm just going to open up the exposure a little bit also come to lens correction i forgot let me enable lens correction first and i'll come back then do all there is to do when it comes to editing this image i'm going to reduce the vibrance also reduce the saturation not too much i'm just trying to make sure i don't deviate away from what i am seeing over here right i mean concerning her skin right so let's just go to curve make sure we add a bit of light in the mid-tones and add a bit of contrast right slight escape so before and after that brings out that punch in it so let me let me draw a different zoom in view right so if you take a look at the image on the left there's so much contrast in it if you take a look at the image on the right there's also contrast in it that's what i'm looking for i don't want to open up my blacks too much nor my shadows too much so i'm fine i'll go into my hsl tab to play along with the hues of the oranges and the reds and also the lightness so i'm trying to maintain that orange look from this outfit so i'm just going to reduce the saturation of the oranges then reduce the luminance ever so slightly i have that there maybe change the hue of the orange towards the red a little bit then i'll change the hue of the red towards the oranges a little bit just so that i have a matching tone if you're wondering on how or what exactly i'm doing here and you don't understand i have a whole playlist on understanding colors here in lightroom on my youtube channel you can go check it out i'm going to leave a card up here as usual just just have a look at it right so this is the before and after just take a look at that before and after let me bring back the saturation in the oranges a little bit and also move up this now let's see I want to see what color this is it's in the greens i'm going to move it up a little bit just because i'm trying to edit a fashion editorial image and the concern or the main aim or the attention is supposed to be on the outfit but looking at here i think my blacks are crashing a little bit i'm going to open up my blacks slightly 
that's fine that's fine so let's see what we've done so far before and after i've brought the skin back to her skin tone color i like what i'm seeing i like what the outfit is doing let's see that off the pants i like that i like everything i've seen over here let's see if i can introduce some color grade so i'm going to implement the complementary color coloring method right so just going to go in for blues in my shadows then add a bit of saturation and just to tone down that font of oranges in my image you can see how the background if it changes right just cold it down a bit let's go into my highlights like i said complementary color so the opposite of blue should be in the yellow so yellow that's fine increase saturation just a tad bit let's see there we have that let's go into our midtones java slow slightly like not too much a hint of red just so our midtones feel lively all right so before and after before and after just take a look at how that alone changes the background lens correction we fix that camera calibration all i like to do is to increase the saturation here just so that i bring back color into the image which obviously i took away from the basic tab over here so in all this is how i'm going to edit this in lightroom right let's jump right into photoshop and in photoshop this is camera raw right so the same thing you know where we picked our gray points i have already um what did i say i've already searched through you can quickly take a time like a moment to look through the image where you figure you think you can figure out your gray point so i'm going to hold control or command on the keyboard zoom in zoom in a tad bit more right then i'll just pick up this then gray point you see with photoshop camera raw you don't get to see the pickup option showing you all the different gray points so you just need to be very careful right i have that let me zoom out and zooming out i feel like it has pushed the tint has been pushed more into the green so i'm going to bring a little bit red into this and just take a look at this when we did that for lightroom it changed drastically i'm also going to change the profile to camera profile i mean camera standard we have adobe standards i don't need that i need a camera matching one so i'm going in for camera standard yes to bring back that punchy feel that punchy colorness uh come on okay so that's done with the profiles let's see contrast wise let's deal with the colors first we use vibrance reduce saturation ever so slightly we're trying to match what we did in lightroom i can just copy the adjustments i did right because i feel like lightroom um and camera raw are almost the same if you should ask me so let's go to um optics just so that we so this is what we call lens profile correction here in camera raw so i'm going to enable that and you can see the vignetting going off i'm just going to enable chromatic aberration then i'll come back to curves open up my curves a little bit in the mittens add some lightness over there right then details i don't like adding sharpness to my image i want it to be less sharpened let me just bring it back to right less sharpen is fine so that it feels closer to skin color right color mixer instead of hsl like you see in lightroom we have color mixer here in camera raw and in color mixer what did i do in lightroom i think i reduced the saturation of this not too much reduce the luminance of this hue the center a little bit into the reds then also this towards the oranges man let's send this more the way down let's see um before before and after before and after and uh, let's go to color mix or color grading sorry we have the same tab here in lightroom so you can see how close camera raw and lightroom 
are almost the same. I'm just going to go into the shadows, hold shift on the keyboard, then drag this just so that I'm accurate on where I am pulling the hue, right? Add some blues into the hue, just a tad bit, go into the highlights, complementary colors, right? Just two is fine, then a hint of red. think one is fine right so let's toggle before and after i feel like i can open up my blacks a little bit so i'm just going to open up the blacks and the shadows right so it doesn't feel too contrasty let's see before and after before and after so after color correcting i feel like i've gained back the color of my background and this is how Let's add some color here in the green primaries. And this is how I will work on this particular image here in Camera Raw in Photoshop. So you can see the information up here, Canon US 5D Mark IV, ISO 185 millimeter focal length f3.2, shutter speed of 1 over 1 68th of a second. And then the information is all over here where majority of the information is I think more is in the shadows than in the exposure, which will be the mid tones. Right, let's just jump into Capture One. And this is where it gets tricky. So in Capture One 21, if you haven't updated yours, I would advise you do. Capture One 21, you have the option here in the base characteristics to fix this reddish tone. So like I said, I shot with the camera neutral. And with my camera neutral, I think I have boosted up my colors and all that on the camera. So it's just going to pick the profile you shot on the camera, then add that hint of red to it when it comes to Canon cameras. I don't think you have that issue with Fuji and Nikon cameras when you're using Capture One. But with Canon, this is the issue you're facing. So with the 5D Mark IV, the new 21, the Capture One 21 has given us this option. Right, so there's the ICC profile. It's more like, um, how should I explain this? The color signs behind using Canon. Right, so you're trying to fix that reddish tone because we won't see that in Lightroom nor in Photoshop. But when you bring it to Capture One, that reddish tone in your mid tones, even in your shadows, sometimes even in your highlights, just as you're seeing here, something probably we don't want. So. So you're just going to pick the pro standard so that it fixes it fix that um, reddish tone annoying thing we don't want from Canon cameras. That's if you're using a Canon camera. I don't think you're going to see this pro standard in Canon 6Ds and all that. So if you don't find this option on the Canon camera you're using, just come to show all, right? You're going to see every available model of any camera you know. Come to Canon. And I am using a 5D Mark IV just so that you want the Pro Standard option for any other Canon camera if you don't see the Pro Standard by default over here. Canon 5D Mark IV, then Pro Standard. And it gets rid of that reddish undertones that you have been seeing in your images anytime you use Capture One. It has been something that's been bothering me a lot of times, so I just stopped using Capture One. Then Capture One fixed that problem. Right, so we know from the previous. Um, Push processing software which is the lightroom and the camera raw that if i want to color correct my white balance i know where to pick it from all right so i'm just going to pick up my white balance tool which is this under the white balance tab then i'm just going to you see the only problem with capture one is you can't zoom in more the highest you can zoom in is at 400 and that's that so i think i picked the correct one i'm just going to warm it up a little bit right then i have this here in capture one i'm just going to also take away the sharpness like i said i hate sharpness right i like the skin to be as natural as possible so let's remove the sharpness then we come back to this so in capture one you have the I think you have enough power to play around when it comes to color, skin toning, even HDR retention and all that. So I'm just going to mess around, right? Open up my shadows a little bit. Make sure I have a bit of contrast, brightness. Let me reduce this. OK. 
clip my blacks a little bit right and with that vignetting issue you can just come to the lens tab over here and pull off your light fall off and it fixes that vignetting issue so i'm just going to leave it i think somewhere here all right then i'm going to add some luma curve this luma curve just affects your brightness and not your colors rgb however affects the colors together with your brightness but luma just the light in the image so i'm just going to add that contrast in the light and not touch my colors so if i am to compare the three softwares then we'll do the three comparisons okay so this is capture one right i love what i'm seeing here in capture one i love the retention of the orange not too saturated i could fix i could do the same thing over here but it will make it look more different compared to this particular one this is what i saw when i was shooting and this after changing into camera standard makes the skin change in a different way also adds a punch of color into the oranges then we have uh, capture one and you can see how the skin treatment looks really really well so for those for those who are into capture one this is how i will process this in capture one this is how i will process this in lightroom and for the camera raw users this is how i'm going to process this in camera raw let me just increase the exposure a little bit and see what will happen right so our uh, before and uh, after i don't really use camera raw that much because i feel like camera raw and lightroom are the same so i'm just going to cancel this yeah let's just cancel all the changes then lightroom i like lightroom a lot but for this particular shoot i don't think i would want to use the lightroom then we come to capture one and i feel like this is what i want to use so this is the before where we started from after the whole adjustment thing done and this is the after right so i'm going to do more adjustments to this because i would want to work from here i just did few adjustments just so that you can see the differences amongst the lightroom the camera and lightroom camera raw and capture one right so capture one let's see what else what else i feel like i need to do more to the skin so i'm going to zoom in into the skin come to basic come to the oranges then reduce the lightness on the skin just so i get that punchiness that color back into the midtones so this is the before and after before and after i like this i like what i'm seeing so much i'm going to color grade this a bit i feel like it's a bit colder now so i'm just going to add some hint of orange into the midtones right not too much the subtle adjustments give it that hint of blue in the shadows and the highlights maybe this one add some greens yep just so i'm within the ring of that melanin feel i've always wanted before and after before and after but after making that basic adjustment on the oranges you can see it affects my i mean this the palazzo pants so what i am going to do is to an, another advantage for capture one is to create a new empty layer new empty layer pick up my brush tool then turn on the max by holding m on the keyboard i'm just going to paint over right to the upper part of the body I'm going to affect just my orange so i don't need to be careful if i am painting over the background or even the outfit 
right so this is the part that's quite important to me turn off the mask come to my basic oranges and let's play with this and as you can see i have just the top being affected and the down still the same so like i mentioned earlier layered lighting and i think i used the parabolic for the seven feet parabolic for the fill and the 45 centimeter beauty dish for that punchy light you're seeing over here so the fill gave me or opened up my shadows for me to see this i added a black cardboard just so that i don't get lights bouncing off back into the shadows over here i didn't want to open the shadows here right so that's that i'll send this into photoshop and we'll continue editing from there and sending this into photoshop i'm just going to right click on this edit with photoshop 2021 probably you'd want to know the settings i edit with when i'm going to photoshop i'm just going to leave it here at adobe rgb because it has or it retains more colors the tiff files also retain more colors i'm going to leave this in 16 bits uncompressed scale fixed i don't want to change anything and edit variants let's just head into photoshop make some magic happen in photoshop and we'll take it from there right in the magical world of photoshop what happens a lot in today's video i would back again do frequency separation on this yes you heard me right it's been a while i did frequency separation on any of my images i'm not proud to say I'm, i'll be doing frequency separation but just so that you might the retouching will seem easier for you just because a lot of people complain about dodging and burning and it's quite tedious and it's time wasting when you're doing dodging and burning but for client work you can skip the dodging and burning not skip totally you can do frequency separation then dodging and burning but first we heal so command or control g on the keyboard we name this to healing and with my healing i mean total healing everything it can be i pick my patch to j on the keyboard fixing the background like this right if it's a liquefy and i have to liquefy or liquefy i just pick the spot healing brush zoom in then take off the blemishes on her face so easy work right I'm really going to just fast forward this when I talk to you guys. So what's been fun about editing either in Photoshop or in Lightroom? Like what do you think these three post-processing softwares have any difference concerning or oh, so let me let me just put this question right. What differences do you think there are in the various post-processing softwares? I mean the Capture One, the Camera Raw and Lightroom and to be exact is there any difference between the Lightroom and the camera raw because I have a lot of people afraid to even jump into Lightroom because they feel like it's a whole different world it's a different software so I think we are done with the healing nothing more to do over here that's with the blemish mover sorry so we'll continue healing but fixing by fixing the color correction on her chest and on uh, tell me over here like i said layered lighting so we have that pointiness of light from that 45 centimeter beauty dish on her face missing the side of her body hence that discoloration or difference in color in there and you know light changes colors right so i'm just going to create a new adjustment layer by holding command con command or control shifts n for a new empty layer rename this to color coloring change the mode to color tap on ok pick up my brush to make sure my flow is at five All right make sure it's a soft round brush 
then all i have to do is just sample right and paint over this so that i have matching colors i don't need the lightness values to be the same i just need the discoloration around there to have matching colors so let's see uh before and our after before and after let me hold and paint the side too just so that we are good to go i'm going to do that for the armpit region too right then i have that what else i don't think i need anywhere to color again so let's see our coloring before and after before and after i feel it's too much so i'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit to 60 percent is it okay is it noticeable yeah i think 50 percent is fine so we can work from here if you want to introduce lights over here you can but i don't feel like i need to because of how i shot this particular image right so from here i'm just going to merge this hold command select and hold command e or control e rename this back to healing like i said then that's that just so that my work doesn't look clumsy so before and after let me zoom out before and after right so from here what do we do next after healing i would have gone straight into dodging and burning but like i said or mentioned in this video i'm going to use frequency separation today just to make our work easier and faster so frequency separation everybody knows how to create their frequency separation layers i'm not going to create anything today i'm just going to play an action i already have if you don't have that you can go to fxray.com to go and download a free frequency separation action it's going to be the same thing i have my own way i mean i have my own frequency separation action i have created it comes with the black and white layer you can also go and do yours or you can download it there are, there are various videos on how you can go about frequency separation now to choosing our initial gaussian blur gaussian blur gaussian blur however you want to mention it it's a now right so if i tap on this and see our before let me zoom in take a look at it before there's not enough texture and by that texture i mean sharpness to the image so i'm not really going to blur out the image so let's reduce this to 5.0 the reason behind the Gaussian blur just to separate our low frequency from our high frequency is because we don't want to when or we don't want the situation when um, we are coloring or we are fixing our color issues on the skin then the textures are playing along with it so we want to separate the textures from the colors just so that when we work on our colors our colors look different or look beautiful and our textures will remain the same so one can go all the way this way but it doesn't make sense it's a full body image i'm not looking at um a portrait so we can go all the way down to say five and let's see a quick before and after i think 4.5 will do for me for this particular image so like i said i have a black and white attachment to this so you can tap on the black and white let's reset this and what you can do to see if your image has a lot of work just pick up the reds and reduce the reds like listen to minus five is fine so you can see the various i mean should i say disparities yeah i can use that word if i'm wrong i just said the word that's <laughs> you guys right let's get back to what we are saying that was a dry joke okay so you can see the various changes of luminosity on the image when it comes to the red tones on the image because when i turn this off mostly i've seen a lot of reds right the yellows are in the background we have yellows in the skin too just so you know so this is just to show you how not smooth the skin looks right and i'm going to give you i won't say the best settings for mixer brush but for mixer brush make sure and I repeat, make sure you're using a graphics tablet. And I would recommend a Wacom graphics tablet, right? Recently, someone stole my graphics tablet. It's been a while, right? So I'm just going to pick up my mixer brush tool, right? My my action is such that when I play my action, it even it automatically picks up my mixer brush tool. 
then the settings i use i have my wet to be 30 my load to, sorry my wet to be 20 load to be 20 mix zero i'm not really mixing any colors just because this has been toggled off i mean this has been turned off right so i'm not mixing any colors so the mix you can even leave it 100 and nothing will happen my flow i want to leave it at 10 and i want to turn on my airbrush or pen pressure i think the pen pressure is turned on so i just turn on my airbrush then we are good to go so come back to our low frequency copy let's see how best we can do this it's been a while i did frequency separation so you guys don't judge my frequency separation also i want to say this in as much as it's been a while i did frequency separation we are trying to follow whatever it is i used to teach when it comes to frequency separation make sure your midtones are in your midtones your highlights are in your highlights your shadows are in your shadows and where necessary right where necessary you you either drag your midtones into your highlights or your highlights into your midtones or your shadows into your midtones or your midtones into your shadows it's vice versa any anyone works also take note that when i'm trying to work on an image let me create a new layer so that i can explain this pick up a normal brush to send the hardness to 100 then make sure it's white so let's let's take a look at this area sorry let's take a look at this particular area this area of shadow right you know that these oh i think i drew too much let's look at this area of shadows right so if you look at this this is one a different shade of shadow two this is also a different shade of shadow three this is also a different shade of shadow so if i am trying to blend the shadows it's either i'm pulling three into one or two into one or i'm trying to clear three by using one or two this is also in the shadow ring i mean all these numbers all these demarcations of skin tones here are in the shadows this is my highlight and in between my highlights and my shadow is my midtones i hope that's explained enough so if i'm going to use the mixer brush on my shadows i know how i'm going to drag what i'm trying to fix am i trying to make sure one looks like three or one looks like two or two looks like three or three should look like one or three should look like two i hope i'm not confusing you i'm making it more clear fine so let's just turn this off and try and add some frequency separation to this make sure it's a soft run brush hardness at zero soft run pressure opacity and flow now let's get into this baby so just going to like you can see at the top here right, it looks too bright for me so i'm just going to push the color from the darkness into the side and make sure i don't spill and always work from a good vantage point please so before and after as you can see working perfectly so my shadows are within my shadows and i also have a trick where i always try to reduce my shadow so with this i'm going to use when i zoomed in and i showed you the illustration i'm going to use the one to actually reduce the shadow here all right then follow along with the three then a little bit of our mittens in there all right just so that it follows along very very well i'm not trying to change the shape of the face i'm just trying to fix the colors with the shape i can change it with dodging and burning so our frequency separation layer here is just trying to make our work very very easy for us and i'm using the parenthesis on the keyboard the ones closer to p and the back um yeah the one the ones closer to the p bottom on the keyboard those parentheses to increase and reduce my brush size i wish you could see the behind the edits of how i'm sitting and how my hands are on the keyboard so one hand on the keyboard the other on the graphics tablet trying to make sure this image looks 
very very good all right so let's see it before and then after before and after all right i don't really fear too much for how drastic i've gone because at the end of the day what do you guys think i would do right i would reduce opacity okay that's down for the face i'm going to the hand not too much work to be done over here because this is in the shadows unless you're a demon and you want to go and see everything in the shadows and i'm not concerned about the color on her left hand that will be on your right when you're retouching or when you're viewing this image just because like i said i don't want light coming in from this side so i place a black polyboard until i make that in a v flat i'm going to call it a polyboard but what normally people know as a v flat right so but with this side just because the light is hitting here that's why i'm concerned about the color that's why we did that color fixation over there i'm not going to remove the shadows here too i'm just going to make sure the colors are okay yeah then this side too make sure they are transitioning smoothly let's zoom in so there's a common mistake i see retouchers do and i'm going to show you very very soon when it comes to frequent separation some people have learned it and i'm glad they've opened their eyes on it some just do it and don't think about it at all so this is what i figured out when you're using frequency separation right you separated your textures from your colors and also on your color layer which is a low frequency copy you are also affecting in a way your luminosity values also not just the color you have your luma values also in there so if i zoom into this side showing me the pixels here like right, you can see highlights and a big shadow over here then we get to our skin color so if i am to say apply my my um, apply the mixer brush from the skin into the outfit or into the shadows take a look at what it does it opens up the shadows by pushing in the color from this side into this side hence the edges become how should i put this it becomes fringy there used to be a word i used when i was actually teaching people um frequency separation you you get to see the effect of the frequency separation like you can literally tell this image was um retouched using frequency separation and it's too obvious that is not the goal the goal with frequency separation is to make sure that like i said your highlights and your highlights your shadows and your shadows where necessary you use either your highlights or your shadows to fix the midtones vice versa and don't overdo it and don't let us see that issue where you can see that there's been an application of mixer brush or the lasso tool over here that's why when you even let's see when i pick up the lasso tool you can see my feathers are five this is what they do they draw right then they apply the gaussian blur the gaussian blur bleeds into the shadows just because you're closer to it and that's where the problem lies so guys make sure you have that in check when you are applying your frequency separation so i feel like i'm done with the frequency separation not too much work so let's see a quick before before and after before and after not too much work even on the lower part of your body because i want to keep the if i take off the shadows then that means her packs are going you know what i am looking out for i can use that to fix this side make sure the transitions are okay before and after right so you can take the next step by picking up now let me try and fix the nose here 
you can if you want to go further you can pick up your lasso too and do this then apply at the long run like i said i am going to reduce the opacity so i'm not going to do that job or oh, you know what's for today i need to do that so filter blur gaussian blur and i'm going to use c3 right so that's after using the mixer brush to apply the gaussian blur you see so the drawing i'm very careful i don't want it to get closer to the eyebrow just because the eyebrow is in the shadows so let me bring up my history just so that you know i'm applying the gaussian blur i applied it twice so close right beautiful now i have this for my frequency separation like i said reduce opacity 65 is fine i still have the effects there right so now to dodging and burning you guys have seen me dodge and burn all the time you've seen me show you how to create your own dodging and burning layers i'm not going to show you how to do that today i'm just going to play my action and please don't come and ask me for my action because these are not for sale because i feel like they are the same thing i have been teaching you guys right so dodging and burning dodge burn checker layer one checker layer two so let's do check layer one dodge make sure my brush and you see with this my action also it automatically picks up the brush make sure it's a soft round brush make sure my flow is at two let's see white on black hide this now let's try and dodge and bend this fix some issues that i think i saw i couldn't fix with the frequency separation so with this kind of dodging and bending i'm just trying to match the luminosity values that's why i'm using the black and white adjustment to help me see all these issues all right so turn it off before and after do you see that do you see how quickly those have been eliminated and right, so you just match that and i feel like this highlighted spot over here it's a bit too much so my burn to reduce it i don't think it's too much work is it and is it too much difficult using this dodging and burning technique see the before and after right so the frequency separation has helped with that reduction of work where i would have actually done all that using dodging and burning so the forehead is quite smooth and i have a trick to also tell you guys when you're shooting right and you have the face the other side of the cheek where light falls off a little bit over there i feel like to me you can just make sure it always falls into the shadow i said it has that oneness when it comes to lightness so as you can see let me show you the before and the after let's zoom out before and after so you see how it makes it look more interesting you don't really have to care about what to do to take off the eye box let's turn the black and white layer on now the cheek area reduce the shadow a little bit right so that it doesn't look too much of a contouring and also reduce this side too because i feel like there's some shadows over here i'm gonna pick up the burn and also reduce the highlights over there so the transition goes in very very smoothly and not too harshly let's see before and after let's zoom out let's fix that so as you can see i keep zooming in and zooming out just because i want to see how it will look when it's zoomed out so see before and after before and after you see 
that change happening over there and it takes years i wouldn't say yes it takes a lot of practice so you can even sit behind dodging and burning for i can say close to three months and you become a master at it constant practice everyday practice learning how to dodge and bend trying making mistakes trying making mistakes keep on trying keep on making mistakes you can even come back to come and watch my videos i'm going to reduce this over here turn on the black and white just so that the colors don't affect my eyes that much And there's one thing I like to do after going through all this process with the normal check, checker one, I use checker two, the inverted layer. Make sure, I'm sure you guys have seen videos on this, right? To make my new adjustment when it comes to dodging and burning, match them. Make sure they're okay. They don't look. Turn that off and just see that marvelous work there. Alright, let's do that for this side also. Make sure they are matching. You should also have an idea that it's an inverted layer. So, where you see black, if you use the burn, it will look white. And where you see white, if you use the dodge, it will look black. So, so then your burn is now the brightest area. Or your shadows are now your brightest areas and your highlights are now your darkest areas so what i'm doing right now is actually reducing the highlights over there just so that they match with the surrounding shadows can you see that let's see that of the hand over here there's this
okay so quickly a, a quick before and after before and after before and after you can see how we have changed the image using dodging and burning make some fine-tune adjustments to this particular image make more fine-tune adjustments let me turn this on okay. I knew it so let's match this and match this and match this make sure not too much of a difference okay okay so dodging and bending out of the way what's next um whitening of the teeth and the eye this one i'm going to do a quick show like i'm just going to show you how i do that so first off i create a hue saturation layer what i do is to each channel i reduce the saturation so i'll go into my reds yellows greens cyan i can never know because some color cast can even hit the eye and sometimes a master too right then we I'll open the lightness of the master a little bit then i'll invert i think i'll leave it and i'll pick up a solid color adjustment i don't think it's a solid color photo filter yeah photo filter what's next to white i always say this blue so we have a blue adjustment over there then we have our brightness with a pinch of a curve in it group these whitening make sure i mask it then pick up my brush to flow of 90 then white on black and I'll paint the eye and also the teeth and that's how I go about with my eye and teeth whitening before and after after here I normally do the color grading in Lightroom, in Capture One, even in Camera Wall, like you saw me do earlier. But if I want to go a step further to color grade this particular image, it's either I'm using my ingredients map tool, which I have a video on that. I think during the quarantine, I did a video on how you can use just the gradients map tool. Also, I did one on curves. So if you want to see that video, I'll link the card up here. Like I said, today's video is um, a full retouch, so pardon me if it's taking quite a while. But I'm just going to avoid all that stress, right, and just use my Photoshop LUT. So if you've watched this video up to this point, for that one lucky person, I'm going to put a coupon code down here. Use that and you get 100% you get discount on the amount charged for my Photoshop LUT. So I'm going to pick up my color lookup table. Then I'll go for Choco Tone in one. Beautiful. Choco Tone in two. What I will do is reduce the opacity. Change five is fine. Before and after. And just take a look at how it adds a hint of that melanin punch to this particular image. I would love to take it off the background, but I like what it's even doing to the background. Right. But if I want to, I'm just going to invert this, come back to a stamped layer, go to my selection. So select color range, 
make sure I'm selecting the skin. Keep selecting the skin. And the skin is in the oranges, so I'm going to get a bit of these orange selection. Come back to my max, right? Hold Command or Control I just to invert the selection onto the max. Command or Control D to deselect. Then what it's doing is trying to the max you see over here is just the mid tones, and I like it. I just want it in the mid tones, not in my shadows and not in my highlights. So this is the before and the after the before and the after i like that punch i am okay with it i don't have to do any color grade next thing i need to do is just add noise and i'm done so i'll add just five command i to invert the layer i don't want the question where someone come ask me or oh, you guys will be complaining how did i create the noise um layer because i have a video on it those who don't like watching my videos go back and watch my videos so um, i think i'm done one last thing one last thing one last punch so i'm going to use selective coloring come to my blacks and add a hint of blues into my blacks and just take a look at how it even affects the yellow on the background this is going to reduce the opacity on that i normally don't keep it 100 and i am done add a hit on vignette so command or control shift n vignette right pick up a gradient tool or hold g on the keyboard make sure you've picked up the radial selection make it reverse or check the reverse layer i'll put this on 50 make sure my color swatch is black and white you can reset it by holding d on the keyboard right I'll zoom out, hold shift on the keyboard and drag from her face or from the point of interest where I feel like the light is at. So I think somewhere around her shoulder. I mean, just here is fine. Drag it all the way down just so that I have a huge feathering point. Let's see. Before and after. I'm just going to use soft light on this. Before and after. And reduce the opacity. before and after just a hint over there and i am done editing this right so let's just save this let's go out of full screen mode let's merge everything by holding command or control shift e on the keyboard to merge everything you can choose to merge everything and save i normally leave the folders this way just because i want this to save as quickly as possible so we we'll save this we'll come into capture one let me show you let me create a variant from this then new variant so we have this as our socc straight out of camera let me bring this here just so that i can rearrange it so straight out of camera this is our capture one processed file and this is after photoshop let me just send it to full screen just so that you can see hide these so straight out of camera as you can see capture one processed and this is photoshop so this is how i'll fully retouch this using any of the push processing softwares but i ended up choosing capture one then i did photoshop color grading then back here in capture one export settings all I have to do is export variants. There are two ways I export my pictures. All right. I'm just going to keep this at 60%. Make sure my scaling is fixed. Not any of these scales. It's a fixed scale. My resolution is at 300. Just because um, I feel like mostly I'll be putting this image on the web or printing it. And on the web, I mean on a website. So I always leave it at 300. But if you're looking at Instagram crop or Instagram compression, you can leave this at 72. Format name. So let's say YouTube full edit. Then let's put this. She's called Rini. And let's put this in Rini. Then file adjustments. That's fine. Everything has been done over here. 
72 fixed scale open width none make sure your icc profile is in srgb because every mobile phone device reads their images in srgb formats right so i'm going to export this i'm going to copy it onto my phone check if everything's right then i'll just post this so thank you for joining me on this long retouch it's been a while i did a full retouch here on my youtube channel i just decided to do this for those who don't really like to go and come back and come and watch previous edits and all that thank you once again don't forget to subscribe to the channel go check out my digital store on shikakopia.com i'm going to leave a link to a handle down in the description use the coupon codes i've been giving you even in my previous video to go and get 50 percent off any of my color profiles or any of my digital products i'm selling on shikakopia.com i'm going to leave a link down in the description i'm going to leave a link down to my handle you can go check out my works see what i do most of the time you can even book me for your retouching jobs and yeah so thank you for joining once again and i'll see you in my next video Happy.